Hi guys, welcome back to Data Every Day. Uh, today we're looking at a data set of wild blueberries uh, and trying to predict the yield for a given record um, of the wild blueberries. Uh, so we have some features about uh, the berries themselves as long as the conditions around the time of collection. Uh, so we're going to try to predict the yield. This will be a regression task and we're going to use a random forest, uh, sorry not classification, regression model to make our predictions. Alright, so let's import NumPy and Pandas for working with the data. Um, for pre-processing, we're going to use the train test split function and standard scalar. Grid search is for optimiz optimizing the hyperparameters of our model, uh, which will be the random forest regressor. So let's go ahead and import all of that and we'll load in the data using pandas.readcsv. So we can grab the file path to the CSV file up here. It's in this folder. Um, here it is. Let's copy that in and take a look at the data. So here it is, 18 columns, um, and they're all numeric, which makes our lives easy. So we're going to drop the row ID column, since that's just an identification, and it's like a uh, duplicate index column. Let's check data.info to make sure we have no missing values, and we do not. So we'll now start pre-processing. I'm going to create a function called preprocess inputs. It's going to take in a data, uh, data frame. It's going to make a copy of the data frame. And it's going to return that data frame. So all this does right now is copy over our uh, data. We'll pass in data here and get back the process version in X. So this is the copy of the data that we're going to perform the pre-processing on. So only a few steps here. The first one is to drop the row number column. So that's df equals df.drop row number from axis one. All right, it's gone. And the rest of the data is like fully clean, um, all numeric. You don't have to worry about encoding or uh, filling missing values. Uh, so basically, last thing to do is to split the yield column off from the rest of the data, because the yield column is what we're trying to predict. So let's split the data frame into x and y where y is just going to be the yield column, so that's what we're trying to predict. And x is all the rest of the data, so we'll drop yield from axis 1. And now we have two sets of the data, which I'm then going to split uh, into four sets using the train test split. Um, that will give us x train, x test, y train, and y test. And we'll use the train test split function from sklearn. We're going to pass in x and y, specify our train size. Uh, let's make it 70% keep shuffle equals true. So that'll shuffle the data before it makes the split and we'll give it a random state so we can reproduce the shuffle. All right, and we'll return these four sets of data here. So we'll get them back over there and let's look at X train. Oh, I forgot to return them, right there we go. Look at X train. Uh, and you can see that the yield column is no longer here. It's now on Y train and this is just 70% of the original data. All right, so Last thing to do for pre-processing is to scale the data. So if we look at xtrain.describe, uh, you can see that the means are all different, and so are the standard deviations. And we'd like all of the uh, val all of the columns to have the same range of values. Um, you know, actually, uh, I, I, I just realized we are using a random forest regressor, so there's actually no point in scaling. This is a tree-based model, and tree-based models don't need scaling. So I'm uh, scaling is just when you make sure all the columns have the same range of values. We don't have to do it today, so I'm actually just not going to. So here's the data. Uh, X-train and Y-train. We're going to start training. Uh, and first what I'm going to do is just create a random forest model. Random forest regressor. Uh, and I'll give this a random state because we want to compare it to another model. So we want to make sure that it's the same every time. So we'll give it a random state and we'll fit this model to the train set. Uh, then what we'll do is get a set of predictions, which I'll call ypred, with model.predict on the test set. All right, so if we look at ypred, these are predictions that should be as close, to po as, close as possible to our y test predictions. Uh, so it's looking pretty good based on these numbers that I can see, but let's actually calculate some metrics with them. We can get the error, or the average error, by subtracting one from the other. So y test minus y pred gives us the error for each example. Now we can get the average error uh, 
over all examples uh, by taking the, the mean. However, there is an issue with taking the mean here, and that is uh, there are negatives and positives, and they're going to cancel each other out. So what I should do instead is first square this error. So we get the squared errors, because now they're all on the positive scale. Then we take the mean. That would be the mean squared error. Uh, however, this is in the squared unit of the target column. So I don't know if it says the unit. Uh, I'm pretty sure it just says yield here. It doesn't tell me what this is measured in. Uh, let's say it's kilograms, though, or something. Um, if it was kilograms, then this would be squared kilograms. And so what I'm going to do is take the square root afterwards to return it to the original unit. And so this is saying it's, on average, 186 kilograms off uh, each prediction. Uh, which, you know, if you look at this at these numbers, uh, that's actually quite good. 186 um, off when we're dealing with uh, a range uh, of thousands uh, is very good, I'd say. Uh, another way we can evaluate the model's performance is using the R squared score, which is a measure of how much better your model is doing than uh, compared to some other model. Well, actually, uh, the baseline model. So, the baseline model is when you just have Y test, how can you make predictions without any input data? The best thing to do is to guess the mean every time. Uh, so, if we calculate the error for this, which would be Y test minus Y test dot mean. That's guessing the mean each time, and we each every time we get an error term as well. We're then again going to square this, so we get them all on the positive scale. And instead of taking the mean, I'm going to take the sum. So we get the sum of squared errors for the uh, baseline model, when we guess the mean every time. Then what we'll do is also get the sum of squared errors, not for the baseline model, but for our model. So we'll just replace ytest.mean with ypred. So here's our sum of squared errors, here's the baseline model sum of squared errors, and I want to see the percent reduction in the error. So what I'm going to do is create a fraction where I use our errors on the numerator and the baselines on the denominator. And so this will be zero when we have zero error, and it will be positive infinity when we have infinite error. Uh, however, that's not as interpretable as if we do one minus this quantity. 1 minus this quantity says uh, when we have 0 error, this whole fraction goes to 0, and 1 minus 0 becomes 1. On the other hand, if we have a lot of error, let's say it goes to positive infinity, then this whole fraction goes to positive infinity, and 1 minus positive infinity goes to negative infinity. So that's the R squared score right here. And the R squared score can take a value from negative infinity to 1. Uh, and that is a nice way to uh, visualize how much better your model is than a particular model, in this case, the, the baseline. Um, so if we add an R squared of zero, that means this whole uh, fraction is one, because one minus one would be zero. Uh, when this fraction is one, that means that our error is exactly the same as the baseline error. So it means we're not doing any better. There's a zero percent improvement. When we have zero error, that means we're as good as we can possibly be. Uh, this whole thing goes to zero if one minus zero is one, so that means it's a hundred percent reduction in error. Okay, let's uh, let's calculate. Let's uh, store these in variables. Oh, let's actually look at what this is. So it's 0.98. That's that's extremely good. Um, so it's a 98 percent reduction in the error between uh, the null model or baseline model and our model. So let's call that R2. This is RMSE for root mean squared error. And we'll print, we'll print them out down here. First, the RMSE, which will display to, I guess, two decimal places is fine. Format with RMSE, and then we'll print out the R squared score. Which will format to five decimal places. Passing in R2. All right, um, so there it is. Okay, so now I want to see if I can get some better results with hyperparameter optimization. So if we look at the random forest regressor, uh, I didn't specify any of the hyperparameters, but essentially um, there's two parameters in here that I'm going to try to optimize. One is estimators, which is the number of, of estimators uh, that are generated within the random forest, the number of trees. Uh, and this is default, by default it's 100. 
then we also are going to uh, adjust the max depth, which is the maximum depth for a given tree. By default, this is none. I believe it, it performs some sort of adaptive uh, max depth. Uh, but these uh, generally should take values around 2 through 8. So we're going we're gonna, to uh, test out a bunch of values. And we're going to use a grid search for this. So grid search is probably the most uh, basic form of, of hyperparameter optimization. It just basically brute force checks every combination of hyperparameters that you specify. So to use it, we need to specify a parameter grid, um, which is a dictionary that maps the name of the parameter. So we have estimators, and we have max depth. And then that, that's mapped to a list of the possible, of, of the values you want to check. So this is, by default, it's 100. So why don't we check out 50, 100, 150, and 200. And for max depth, we'll check 2, 4, 6, 8, and 10. All right, we have our parameter grid. Now we're going to build a model, which is going to be a grid search CV object that wraps around our random forest regressor. I'm going to make sure to keep the random state in here the same as we saw before, so we can be sure that we're actually getting an improvement. And we pass in the parameters here. All right, so we'll run that, and then we'll fit the model on the train set. And then I also want to calculate the R squared and stuff uh, in the RMSE, so let's put that underneath. All right, we'll run this, and oh, we have an issue. Let's see, invalid parameter estimators. Uh, did we misspell something? Oh, it should be estim. Okay, let me let me check it. So we'll go to the documentation. Here it is. Oh, it's n estimators, not estimators. Okay, so we're we're doing s n estimators and max depth. Uh, so here it is, n estimators. Let's run that. So this will just take a moment. Uh, it does have to generate, I think, 20 different random forest models because uh, one for each of these. For, for each one of these values, we have five values to, to match it with. So it's four times five different models it's creating. And I'll resume this once it finishes. All right, it finished. Um, and it looks like we actually did get an improvement. Um, so our RMSE went down by about one, uh, a little less than one. So, you know, it's nothing really substantial, um, but we also have to consider that our original model was already extremely good. I mean, uh, as at least by these metrics. Our R squared went up a little bit as well. We now, with working with a 2 point, uh, a 9, 9, 0.98259, whereas before we had a 98243. Um, and we can also check the actual parameters that it found to be the best parameters using model.best params. And you can see uh, a max depth of 10 and the number of estimators being 200 was the best. Uh, now something to consider going forward is that these are actually the maximum values that I had allowed it. So I, if, if I were to get something like this, I'd probably add some more values afterwards to see if boosting it even further it would be uh, a good idea. But that will sum up today's video, so thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, make sure to subscribe and hit the bell for more content and leave any comments you have in the section below. I'll see you guys tomorrow. Have a fantastic day.